So good morning, everyone. Yeah, along with last, last class, today we are talking about the calcium oscillation from the non-exciting cell. So this paper is published in 2007 about the physical manipulation of calcium oscillation, facial age, also differentiation of human mesenchymal stem cell. So basically, this is paper compare the human MSC, human MSC, and then osteoblast, which is bone cell, and then they check the calcium oscillation affinity. Here, this is a uh, basal level to the time-dependent fluctuation. Human MSC, they can show this kind of oscillation. Yeah, from two different cells in normal media as well as osteogenic differentiation media. In case of human osteoblast, uh, not 100% similarly, but anyhow, they can show this oscillation. But we can see that oscillation peak frequency significantly decrease in human osteoblast. So this is their quantification. Uh, this is their representative oscillation. But when you look at the reality, some cell, uh, let's say uh, one cell, they are two peaks, two spikes during a certain period for human osteoblast, and then four, four peaks, six peaks, ten, eight peaks. This is this meaning that this means that human osteoblast cell have around two to four peaks per period, but in case of human MSC, opposite, uh, more spikes, more spikes per cell, per specific period you can detect it, and the y-axis is percentage of the cell. So which means that human MSC can have more peaks compared to human osteoblast. So this is, uh, this is representative, but from the overall, as I told you, not 100% cell have oscillation. So this is another way to quantify. And the figure B is about uh, calcium spikes percentage. Mm. So which means that uh, you, let's say from this image oscillation, maybe this is the initial or highest peak. Compared to highest peak, uh, what is their percentage of spikes? So this kind of graph you can get from this oscillation. So the reason why I show, show, show this one is that uh, when you get the real result from the imaging over, over time, this is one way to show representative. The other way is there are another way to show your data. This is average spikes per cell, yeah. human MSC, and over differentiation, seven day differentiation, 14 day, 21 day, 28 days, this is also blast. You can observe over differentiation to the osteoblast from the human MSC to osteoblastic cell, the average spikes per cell are decreasing, similar to the osteoblast. But meanwhile, average peak, similar. Mm. So we can say that, as I told you, this oscillation is one of the cell behavior cell marker to say something. So here, they already showed that human osteoblasts relatively have less oscillation, less frequency compared to human MSC. But here, this figure four, they confirm that over differentiation period, oscillation come to be similar to the human osteoblast. And then here, they checked the different electricity. Here, control is 
they culture the cell, mitochondrial stem cell under different electrical voltage from 0 point voltage per centimeter to 10 voltage centimeter. They found out that 10 voltage centimeter have dramatically less average spikes, which is very similar to the human osteoblast. And then this is, all these three is a DC, direct current. This is AC, alternative current. And then uh, this figure B is about uh, yeah this D human MSC is a differentiation under electricity. So as this human MSC graph per cell more spike cell have around like 30 percent for human MSC, but Human osteoblast, initially, most of the cell have only two peaks, around 60%. But while the human MSC are cultured with the differential media and the electricity, you can see this tendency is come to be opposite, very similar to the human osteoblast. So after confirming this change of the oscillation, they check the final osteoblast differentiation using this 0.1 voltage, voltage per centimeter under oxygen media. That they found out that uh, their LP activity or cell density, both of them are marker of osteogenic differentiation, are enhanced. And then here they summary that electrical stimulus. They didn't find out the underlying mechanism. What kind of specific is involved, but probably they affect the integrin or calcium channel, such a receptor, and then somehow this kind of electrical stimulus that can affect the finer calcium oscillation, then this oscill oscillation somehow they are help decrease the oscillation helpful for the osteogenic differentiation, especially gene expression level. And then here. Uh, this article, how they describe their, discu their discussion part. Recently published results indicate that the calcium spikes in human MSC are regulated by the release of calcium through the inositol trisportate receptor, ip 3 r which is located to the ER, and voltage-gated calcium channel, which is located in cell membrane, played a minor role. So they mentioned that ip 3 r in ER is a major, but the voltage gate channel in cell plasma membrane play a minor role. We can confirm such a result by our observation that treatment of cell with a potent inhibitor of phospholipase C or sub C gargin decreases the number of the calcium spikes from to four to two, respectively. This phospholipase C and sub C gargin is all of them are marked inhibitor of this IP3R. And then this subsigargin is inhibitor of specifically the CERCA. So together with the recent finding that calcium influx in the human MSC may be mediated by the membrane calcium pump and potassium calcium exchanger, it appears that multiple entry pathways are likely involved in the regulation of calcium oscillation. So, Along with this finding, uh, from the ER to cytojo, or cytojo, cytojo ER or calcium pump, not only that, but, but also normally recognized calcium pump to cell membrane can be involved. So we have demonstrated that application of electrical stimulation is able to couple the phospholipase C with the same surface on human osteoblast and human MSC and that the stretch activated calcium channel, SHC, which is another type of SOC, mediate the calcium influx across the cell membrane of the human osteoblast. Note that treatment of human MC with lithium ion block the calcium oscillation. Since lithium ion is known to inhibit the SHC, it appears preserved that SHC mediate the calcium influx required to sustain the calcium oscillation in the undifferentiation of human MSC. 
So I didn't show this result here, but from this sentence, you can imagine that this lithium ion is similar to the gadolinium. This is one of the inhibitor to block the, this stretch activated calcium channel, which also block the calcium oscillation of the human MSC. The electrical coupling mechanism mediating change in the calcium. And in response to electrical stimulus, it is plausible to assume that the membrane potential is altered and calcium flux are induced. So here, uh, they, this, actually from their data, they didn't see exactly the calcium influx enhanced in the cytoplasm. But they only showed the calcium oscillation disappear. But so that is why they mentioned that it is plausible assume that the membrane potential is altered and the calcium flux are induced inside of the cytosol. But it is not clear how cells can sense and respond to ES as small as, as, small as, as 0.1 voltage per centimeter, which cannot activate the voltage gate channel or direct regular calcium dependent subcellular process. This is very important. So, of previous discussion, we can imagine two mechanisms. First one is they found out that the ER receptor, IP3R, they are involved in human stem cell calcium oscillation. When they block this IP3R using certain inhibitor, calcium oscillation is gone. They confirm. And then they also found out that when, when they induce the ES, calcium oscillation is also gone. But the point is that they only use 0.1 voltage per centimeter, which is not that much high to activate this normal voltage gate calcium channel. Even though the human stem cell have little calcium channel, when this voltage is over a certain threshold, they can be activated. But here in non scientist cell, those, those, those kind of things cannot happen. So uh, overall, they tried to say that they didn't exactly know how the ES can change the calcium oscillation, but not from the voltage gate, uh, gate calcium channel, but probably this uh, lithium targeting stretch, uh, very, yeah, stretch activated calcium ion channel like PHO, one and two, those kind of thing can be involved. So this is another uh, paper regarding the substrate rigid rigidity regulate calcium oscillation via low wave pathway in human stem cell. Yeah. Published in 2008. So this Tejin Kim is one of our collaborator who is working, working in Busan National University with us. When he was a postdoctor in uh, University of Illinois, yeah, he published this paper. So here, uh, they are using, they culture the human stem cell under different media and inhibitor. For example, when they culture the calcium-free HBSS. Uh, normally HBSS, they have calcium but in I, I trade also, you can find out that some HBSS that doesn't have calcium. So when you look at, when you use the HBSS, please be careful. Some HBSS doesn't have calcium. When you wash it, the cell, all cells are detached. Okay, please remember that. So I highlight them, but some, sometimes, I don't know, the people are really recognized, they, they really want to use calcium-free HBSS, so sometimes they use it. And then maybe you are failing to get a good result. So calcium free, which means in the media there's no calcium, and then no calcium oscillation from human stem cell. But when they culture them under calcium media, they start to show calcium oscillation. Yeah. Why they show initially 500 seconds, this is in basal level, like 10 minutes, they check. So let's say 10 minutes, they have five, four or five peak which means one peak per two minutes, right, around. And then nipidipine is one of the L-type voltage-gated calcium channel. When they block it, also calcium oscillation disappear, which means that this is working. Oh. 
this human MSC have probably have this voltage gate Kashmi channel, and then when they block it, this is also gone. Oh, interesting. And then they treat that uh, LA3 plus. This is also one of the SOC inhibitor. Mm. SOC inhibitor. And then Gadolinium as well. Also, SOC is stretch activated calcium channel or store op operated calcium channel. Oh. So, when they block this SOC or stretch activated calcium channel, like PH1 and 2 or ORI1 and 2, they also lose the calcium oscillation. Oh, interesting. Not only voltage gate channel, but also store operated calcium channel or pH one and two calcium channel, they are gone. This oscillation, interesting. And then they also try to check this two APB. This is inhibitor of IP3 receptor, which is located in the cell uh, ER nucleus membrane, right? And then also they are gone. Oh. Actually, this IP3R, they release the calcium from nucleus ER to cytosol. And then, subsigargine, this is calcium saver from the cytosol to the ER. Also, when they block this one, also they are gone. Oh my god, what kind of things happen? Which means that this calcium oscillation is very sensitive. When you block any, any, one of the, any kind of channel which are working, for balancing this calcium oscillation, they are gone. Okay, this is a very important finding. So this is for your uh, memory of the last class. Yeah, let's say this is uh, uh, outside of cell media, cell membrane, cytosol, and ER nucleus membrane. This subsigargin block the cytosol to ER calcium saver. But as I told you, all calcium oscillation we can detect from the cytosol area. And then these two APB, uh, they block the IP3 receptor. This is flux to the calcium ER to the cytosol. Actually, they also block this TRPM3, but here they focusing on this. And then SOC. SOC is ORI1 and 2 or stretch gate down channel like page 1 and 2. Also, they are located in cell membrane. So here, we can say that, let's say, uh, this, let's say this is another like a uh, voltage gate channel. When you block this one, oscillation, gone. This one, gone. This one, gone. This one, gone. Which means that all these kind of ion channel are involved for having this oscillation for the cell, stem cell. Hmm. And then they found out that, oh, everything is involved. And then, okay, this is the one finding and then they culture the cell on different PA gel from 1 kilopascal to 8.5 kilopascal. Control is normal glass. Glass, this is all on the glass. Glass, oh, they are similar calcium oscillation. But when they culture the 1 kilopascal, what happened? Almost nothing. 5 kilopascal, a little bit. 8.5, more frequently. Which means that, depending on the stiffness, human stem cell, they change their calcium oscillation. But which kind of thing are involved? Which means that, what is the big difference between 8.5 versus 1 kilopascal? Probably, one of the, these uh, channel are involved. Or, not one, combined one. Or, or, everything can be involved, right? But we don't know yet. So which kind of calcium channel are involved, but we can say that stimulus dependent calcium oscillation change. Now this is their quantification per per minute, uh, how frequently of, of oscillation. Yeah. So per minute means five minutes, like two or three, so 0 0.6, 0 0.5 per minute. And then depending on the stiffness decrease, they are decreasing. And the magnitude, magnitude is that they are higher, uh, this height, right? Also, this control height, higher than others, this height is smaller than others. So they average these peaks. Okay. Here, yeah. So they also check some decrease of magnitude. Okay. And then, 
we already know that uh, what kind of thing happen when you culture the stem cell on different stiffness. We all know that mechanical transduction change, right? So they, they treat the typical mechanical transduction inhibitor, cyto D, actin polymerase inhibitor, nocodazole microtube inhibitor, ML7, rock, uh, uh, the, that inhibitor, and then blevistatin, ectomash inhibitor, Y27, this is a uh, low rock pathway inhibitor, LPA, this is enhancer, low A enhancer. ML7 is PMLCK inhibitor. So, cyto D, when you treat it, this is all, all under glass. Yeah, all under glass. And then, cyto D treated, no change, which means actin polymerization, not involved. Nocodazole, microtubule, not involved. ML7, little, but not probably. Blevistatin also, uh, not much change. Or why compound dramatically change? But when we increase the low rock, low wave pathway <coughs> using this LPA, not much of a change. Actually, this is for their uh, confirmation of this ML7 and blevistatin. This uh, conventional low rock pathway is not involved, but only Y compound that are involved. So this is their quantification from the frequency and the magnitude oscillation. So they found out that, uh, here they mentioned that LPA, when they treat it from their quantification, little change. Okay, you can see this trend, trend, little change. So we can say that, ah, so here they mentioned that typical RORAC pathway inhibitor, as well as activator, they change their oscillation. But it's not one direction, which means that RORAC pathway turning on their oscillation and then turning off no oscillation, not like that. When they are balanced, they are decreased, gone, or it's increased, gone. Okay, so this oscillation is very uh, tightly regulated. So one, so you have to remember this one. This oscillation is not one direction, but depending on your, uh, when they are not balanced to a certain level, they are gone. So here, they describe like that. Inhibition of calcium channel at the plasma membrane by a selective L-type calcium channel blocker and SOC inhibitor block the spontaneous cytoplasmic calcium oscillation. This is just suggests that extracellular calcium pool and calcium flux across the plasma membrane are essential for the spontaneous calcium oscillation in human MSC. This uh, l nipidifin Latinum ion and cadmium ion is all blocking the cell membrane ion channel from, from cell membrane to cytosol. And then we the next exam how intracellular calcium store ER contribute to the cytoplasmic calcium oscillation by blocking IP3 receptor inhibitor and circa pump inhibitor. And then we can all observe that all block inhibitor block the spontaneous calcium oscillation. And then TG treatment also causes a transient increase of cytoplasmic calcium concentration, which returns to the basal level after TG treatment for more than one hour without resumption of calcium oscillation. So from this result, we can say that uh, calcium oscillation are dramatically regulated by the extracellular calcium and then ER calcium influx. Sorry. So we can say that balance low rock signaling is important for calcium oscillation. Yeah, from this uh, pre previous uh, low rock pathway inhibitor, the Y compound, as well as LPA, the agonist of G copper receptor protein, is known to low rock pathway signaling pathway. They all a little bit inhibit the calcium oscillation. And then, or, or actually, here, they also found out that uh, this low-way active 
plasmid as well as negative low way um, knockdown plasmid. When they treat, they all inhibit the cash oscillation. So here, they culture. Uh, this is their uh, transient uh, endogenous low wave activity. So for linking the low wave activity and the cash oscillation, they check the low wave activity from the uh, very flat image. This control and high stiffness, they maintain the higher low a activation, activation, which is a typical mechanical induction. But when they culture them on soft stiffness, low wave activity is gone. So we can find out that low wave activity is gone. And then this is a uh, low wave V14 and then low wave 9 N19. This is a uh, low wave knockdown plasmid. Low wave V14 is low wave exogenous activating plasmid. This is their control. Calcium and then with the calcium biosensor O. So this is a human MNC normal. They maintain this 60% uh, calcium frequency. Okay. But when they activate more rock, low, low activity, also this oscillation decrease. And then they block the low way using this uh, mutant one, also decrease. So we can say that balanced low way is key for maintaining the MNC oscillation. So this is their meaning. Okay, and then this result suggests that other factors independent of low wave may also participate in regulate the cash oscillation in response to substrate rigidity. From this result, here they say that okay, you, we we already found that low wave is involved, and then balanced low wave is, is important. And then the another approach is that when you culture the cell on soft stiffness. And then they enhance the low wave activity similar to the 8.5 kilopascal. And then theoretically, the, they start to show the calcium oscillation. Right? But here, even though they enhance the LPA, there is no oscillation detected. And then this low wave V14, uh, they add the exogenous low wave activity in one kilopascal stem cell. And then they even add LPA for activating. So let's say this is double activation, but still no oscillation, which means that low wave activity only is not the major factor to induce the calcium oscillation. And then uh, this uh, Tejin Kim, he published another paper yeah, during the postdoctor. A uh, distinctive mechanism regulating mechanical force induced calcium signaling at the plasma membrane in the ER, human MSC. Very similar work, but they are more deeply analyzed. Here they using the flat system. So for your memory, the wire is flat. Okay, this uh, calm modulum and then M13, these two protein, they have some certain space between them. And then they have two dye, but you only excite this, this dye, 4, 3, 3. And then when they are apart each other, they only excite the, this intensity, this, this laser. But under calcium are involved, calcium can bind the car modeling. And then car modeling Calcium can link M13 and CAM modulin, and then these two dye can close each other. And then what happened? When you induce only this 433 four, nanometer, the energy transferred to the white pad, and an excitation can be detected from 5 to 7 nanometer. This is the exact meaning of the flat. So you can see the very small, close architecture change of the protein. Okay, and then th they are using this flat dye for checking the calcium amount in the cell. And the basic concept is that they using the optical tweezer. Optical tweezer means that 
optically you can detect the cell. Meanwhile, you can change the bead using your machine. And then this bead uh, are covered by the fibronectin. Why? To attach the cell membrane. But they are as a control, they are using this BSA as a control. BSA is just protein which is not which doesn't have a, doesn't have any little or well, almost nothing adhesion protein. But fibronectin, we already know that they have RGD, RGD peptide sequence. So the when you cover the bead by fibronectin, they can easily bind this cell membrane. So after putting this bead on the cell membrane, and then when they turn on the optical tweezer, after focusing them, this can be moved. And then when they move, and then when they attach the cell membrane, cell membrane also tensioned, right? While they are tensioned, they want to check the calcium influx as well as the calcium release. And then they found out that without bead, yeah, this calcium oscillation doesn't happen. With bead, only bead, we are at the bead, little bit, but bead plus force by the optical tweezer, they more enhance the frequency. And then here, important thing is that you are worried, you are have some question. Okay, previous paper, they show calcium oscillation, right? Here, no calcium oscillation from without bead. What happened? Because they culture the cell under calcium free media. Okay. And then we can say that this uh, force induced calcium influx, calcium oscillation, is coming from not from cytoplasm, not from cell media calcium, both, both from the ER calcium. We can easily think about that, right? But when they do the same manner in BSA treated, nothing happened. So flat ratio change also, this flat ratio change is from to detect the maximum calcium affinity also enhanced in with force with fibronectin coated bead. So this is their like uh, image without force at the force this flat signal change but BSA coated bead when you turn on the optical tweezer <coughs> to induce force to the cell membrane, no change of the flat. Means no calcium detected. And then when you check the calcium oscillation from this flat, 518 bit added this 10 minutes later, a uh, little change. After turning on the force, they start to show oscillation. But here, BSA coated one, nothing. All these things under calcium free media. Okay. So this is a, a video of the cytosol calcium biosensor. So you can see like many blotting. Yeah. So here, let's try to say that after this finding, they tried to think about how this happened rationally for discussion. Two possible mechanism can regulate the calcium release from ER because there is no calcium in the media, right? Upper mechanical laser to ER friction. First, external force can either transmit deep inside of cell and then mechanically alter the channel on ER for calcium release. They don't know, but when you change the cell membrane, somehow the ER can be tensioned. One mechanism, possible. Second, they trigger the biochemical signaling cascade to produce IP3. IP3 is when they happen. Originally, they are they happen. They are released from the cell membrane after cleaving the lipid of cell membrane by the certain ion channel like GPCR, and then this IP3 biochemical diffuse inside inside of cytosol, cytosol and then activate ip 3 er sensitive calcium channel in ER. So one is mechanically, second one is biochemically, right? To distinguish them, we directly monitor the ip 3 level using flat biosensor. This flat biosensor not for calcium, 
they made another flat biosensor for detecting the IPC level. And then they found out that mechanical force didn't induce any change of IP3. Why? As a passive control, ATP increased IP3 production in human MSC. Suggesting that second mechanism is unlikely. So that is why we can say that laser Twitter traction should transmit deep inside the cell to mechanically release the calcium from ER. Here, this is the IP3 threat, not calcium, IP3 biochemical sensor. Without ATP, mm, not much of change. ATP are induced as passive control. They start to show some little blue, red color, you can see a little bit. But when you check the force using the 518 bit, no change. Why they use flat? For measuring the IP3 in the inside of the cell, very hard. Right? And then the amount is very, very small, so it's not easy to see the IP3 release outside of the cell. You have to measure the IP3 level inside of the cell cytoplasm. Right? So that is why ELISA doesn't work. ELISA has always checked the cell release media, cell release cytokine. Right? But you have to measure the inside of the IP3 level as a sensitive manner, so that's why they use it flat. Then this is another experiment. Okay. Uh, this blue, this blue means uh, 518 bit added, and red is force under Tg. Tg is circa inhibitor to block the calcium saving to the ER. Rise to 2 APB. 2 APB is IP3 receptor inhibitor. So normally, when they induce the force by the tweezer, they start to show this oscillation, right? But under this inhibitor, you can see why this peak enhanced initially. As I told you, circa inhibit initially, the cytotoxin level calcium suddenly enhanced because there is no saving to the ER. But over time, this initial thing disappeared, and then there's no calcium oscillation. So why they block the ER saving or little ER releasing calcium channel? Nothing happened under force, which means that ER calcium is involved to induce calcium release from the ER under calcium-free media. So here they said that depletion of ER calcium by subsigargine or 2-APB entirely abolished the force-induced oscillation, which confirmed the ER-induced calcium oscillation, right? So here we can say that even though you change the cell membrane, somehow ER is changed, so the ER can release the calcium. So uh, many people previously say that when you induce something, calcium always increase or decrease one direction. But the real phenomenon is nowadays calcium oscillation change. So this is a re recent finding. And then here again, we already know that when cell membrane changes, what happened? Cell membrane, they attach to the actin cytoskeleton microtubule, so mechanical transduction can be involved, right? So they are using many typical inhibitor, cyto-D, actin polymerase inhibitor, nocodazole, microtubule inhibitor, ML7, MLCK inhibitor, FLAVI, ectomash inhibitor. When they inhibit those old things already, like pre-treatment 30 minutes, and then they induce this similar uh, membrane change by optical tweezer, no change of calcium oscillation. Which means that when calcium oscillation happen from this cell membrane change, mechanical transduction should be involved. Okay. And then at that time, 2015, TRPM7 is already known as a, one of the key receptor regulated by the mechanical transduction. So they block 
cell PM7, which is located in the cell membrane. When they also block it, no change. But this is SIRA control. They start to show oscillation. So typically well-known inhibitor as well as membrane channel, those are all involved for inducing calcium oscillation from cell membrane. And then, actually, theoretically, we can say that uh, uh, we, when we, from this result, some ER calcium can induce. Okay. But we didn't check reality. The ER is really released from calcium, so they are using the ER calcium sensor. Okay. So ER calcium sensor, they have a little change. You can see it is y axis, not 1 to what zero to 5. 5 to 0.6, it will change. So that's why, as I told you in the last, last class, for ER calcium, you have to decrease the calcium oscillation measurement time from not one second, 0.5 second. When I did, when I did one second, I cannot see this kind of calcium sensor, calcium oscillation from the ER. But when I decrease some uh, that gap time from one second to 0.5 second, Finally, I can see it. Very sensitive. So this decrease of calcium sensor, which means that this time ER is released. And then quickly they're coming back. But this time is very short. OK. So this is their image. This is a representative little change. But in reality, when you see the laser, uh, confocal, or camera image, you cannot see anything. Actually, this previous cyto cytosol calcium oscillation, you can see the blinking thing. But in case of ER, you cannot see anything. Or no change. But when you dramatically, when you measure using software, you can see this kind of sudden decrease of calcium. So for calcium imaging, you cannot believe your eye. You should believe the data from the image. OK. And then, again, First is this ER calcium release. When they block this conventionally confirmed the mechanical transduction inhibitor, or inhibitor decrease some calcium release. This is this amount of calcium release, they are decreased among here. Okay. So this too is very important for your experiment. So if you want to culture like any kind of cell and different mechanical change, stiffness, or 3D, or anything. If you want, when, when you check it, calcium, you, we cannot say, let's say, high stiffness can show better results for your assay. But this is not always, high stiffness can have calcium oscillation. Sometimes, high stiffness can have less calcium oscillation. And uh, less stiffness can high calcium oscillation. Okay? You cannot say one direction. but when, uh, as I, when I search many paper, people say that when cells start to uh, adjust or do certain things in many way, they are maintaining the Hashim oscillation. So they, when they are ready for something, they tend to have Hashim oscillation, but not always. And then, as a last, mm. they want to confirm again. So they checked the cytosol calcium level. And then they also checked the previously well-known calcium inhibitor, nifidipine, L-type voltage calcium channel, adrenium, latinium, and STM, and TRPF7. OK. And then they checked this calcium calcium oscillation, but they only want to check the cytosol calcium, so they are using 2-APB. So 2-APB, as you imagine, why is 2-APB? 2-APB is uh, 2-APB, they block this IP3 receptor inside of cell, inside of ER, to the cytosol, right? Mostly. They also block this cytosol to 
and same name um, outside to Saitojo, but mostly they, many people they used two APB to block the ER2 Saitojo calcium flux. But previously, all, all of the condition is, or is that cell free media, right? Up to here, cell free media. But here, they want to check no cell, I mean, cell, cell media, I'm sorry, calcium media, calcium including media, but they are using two APB to block the ER calcium level. They blocking the old ER, and then they want to check when the cell culture the calcium included media, but no ER calcium level, also any kind of thing to change from this uh, tension change of cell membrane. This is their second question. Okay, so all ER calcium release inhibited. So when they see something, this is coming from the outside of cell media to cytosol. Okay, and then here control they maintain the calcium, but in Philippine, no chain doesn't work. But this gadolinium, latinium, STM, TRP7, all are decreasing, which means that when 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 this cell have calcium change, not only ER from the previous page, but also be outside media to cytojo, also they are involved. Okay. And then conventional mechanical transition inhibitor, when they treat it. Outside media to cytosol, calcium influx happen mediated by mechanical transition, their question, no call, and MR7, blabby. Through this one, they found out that cyto D and no call. Actually, this is originally when they induce force, they should go up. But no call and cyto D they maintain, which means that. This two is involved for outside media, outside cell to the cytosol, calcium influx. Okay. So they found out that no, they actually using two different media conditions. One is without calcium media, and then try to see calcium in ER. They are involved for calcium oscillation from the force. They found out that, yes, through this conventional mechanical transduction and the TRP7 channel are involved to release calcium ER2 cytosol. And then when they use calcium media, but they block the all ER calcium, also outside cell media to cytosol happen through this cytoskeleton, TRP7, and calcium influx. Okay. And then once again, they want to say they want to say that this calcium influx from the outside media to inside is depending on the biochemical factor or not. For saying that, they are using. Oh, they added PP1, PF228, and LY29. Why is that? Uh, inhibition of SRC inhibitor, PP1, FAC inhibitor, PPF, PF, and PS create and LY. LY29, this is PSK inhibitor. This is all a biochemical conventionally well-known pathway inhibitor. When they under when they block it, what happened? They all maintain the increase of calcium level, right? Not like that. When they are involved, they should maintain the calcium, but they are going up always, which means that from this direct cell membrane induced calcium uptake from the outside of media to the cytosol is not from the this SRC FAK API 3 k pathway. Okay? No this effect. 
And then they also check the delay time. Delay time means that they measure the when they induce the force. How much delay happened to induce the calcium influx? Okay, and then only cytosol calcium, only ER calcium, only cytosol, ER blocking, cytosol media with calcium, and then ah oh, sorry. This two is no extracellular calcium media. And then they check the uh, cytosol calcium level from that dye and the ear calcium dye. And then they check around one second they are delayed from the force to the calcium peak. From, and then this is meaning that this is all from ER. Okay, because there is no calcium from the media. But when they under, when they measure the same meaning, same manner under 2 APB, when they deplete the calcium in ER, and then when they induce the force in cell membrane, only 20 seconds are delayed. 20 seconds later, calcium oscillation happened. This is from outside to the cytosol, which means that when you induce cell membrane, so initially, media to cytosol first, and then ER to cytosol later. Okay, they have some sequence. So several regions may contribute to longer time delay of ER calcium release. Yeah, from the outside the media to cytosol, 20 seconds, but ER to cytosol, 10, 100 seconds. Mechanical coupling machinery may need time for reinforce to allow sufficient force transfer between plasma membrane and the ER. You know, it takes some time to amplify the mechanical signal somehow, but uh, let's say, and the second mechanism is channel on ER membrane could have different kinetics and mechanical sensitive. Therefore, they may need larger force and reinforced force to be developed at the site of ER to reach the stress of physical opening. Maybe we cannot dis completely distinguish these two mechanisms, but as a discussion part, they mention like that. So, but when you imagine mechanical force, they are very fast, right? So I believe that first first part is can be rejected. Yeah. Mechanical force, we can learn that they are millisecond, nanosecond. They are directly linked from cell membrane to ER. So when this is a region, mm, not, not like that. But second, maybe they need some, uh, some certain stress hold, but they can be enlarged over time. So while we are moving this, uh, this bit on the cell membrane, Maybe while you are inducing 100 second movement, this force change can finally link to the ER change. So you can easily easily think about that cell membrane change larger than the nucleus ER change, right? Nucleus ER, they try to maintain their morphology as much as possible. They do not want to change easily. So when when the membrane is dramatically changed certain range, and then now they change a little bit. So this is their second mechanism suggested. So I think we can think about based on the second mechanism. So let's go back to our first paper, uh, first result. So here, why they are doing this experiment? Previously, what they happened? They, they, they found out that Stimulus change the calcium oscillation. And then they want to know when they increase the stiffness, for example, the, from soft tissue, when stem cells are initially located, located in soft tissue like bone marrow or blood, blah, blah, blah. And then suddenly the stem cell is recruited in the injured part and then they attach. Then they feel the matrix. And now they start to show calcium oscillation, right? So this is like quiescent state of the stem cell. 
and then when they are culture high speed this is activate stage and then when they activated how this calcium is regulated first outside of cell to the cytosol or inside inside the ER to the cytosol or both for answering that after six seven years later they do again this experiment so they found out that uh, without so for cup, for decoupling this outside to cytosol, inside to cytosol, they are using two different media conditions. One is calcium-free media, and then they do such experiment. The other one is that calcium media, but they block the ER calcium, and then they can make a summary. Okay. But the uh, uh, final take-home message is similar, not from the biochemical factor, but from the force. This, this is perfect. And then certain mechanical transduction is involved to induce calcium modulation, right? And then calcium is always initially from outside to inside. And then maybe ER to an ER to cytosol, a little bit delayed later. So up to now, this is some like mechanical transduction mediated calcium things. So I briefly uh, introduce about this ES in this calcium peaks. So we, because which I, we are some people are working on this project. So simply. Here, basically, they use the electrical pulse, pulse, and then they check the stem cell oscillation. Here, uh, they use the presence or absence of calcium. So upper one is with calcium, below one is without calcium. Okay, with the calcium, they increase the voltage over small to large small to large. But when you see with calcium, 13 milliwatt per watt per minute or wait a second. Watt per meter, yeah, watt per meter. You can see 13 watt, they increase, they start to show calcium influx, right? But here, 17 or 21 they start to show influx, which means that this is, what is that? This is from the ER, right? This is from the media initially. So we can say that, oh, and then we can, we can say that with or without media, anyhow, ES, they, they induce calcium influx, okay? And then we already know that oh, when calcium when you sell MSC culture on certain condition, they originally have this calcium oscillation. So here, they induce ES. When they're going down and turn on, they start to show again. Okay. And then here, when they're going back, they start to show up, but not like that, that similarly, but a little increase and go down. And they do again, and then they start to increase. Which means that they play with the time point of the ES. When they go down, these two kind of types are shown. When they're going up, they're going up, they expect certain more increase or certain like change it. But once they start to show the increase of cash influx, they just influxed on cash modulation. And then when they just under basal level, when they start, when they add it, little increase, but they try to show their homogeneous, their original calcium oscillation. Little increase, but they try to maintain their time point. Okay. Also, little increase, but this is their original like frequency. They try to maintain their original frequency. So they play with how ES can interrupt the calcium oscillation. The finding is that uh, they 
depending on the uh, time point, the cell behave change. Okay. But actually, all cell cannot have same Cauchy oscillation phenomenon at one time. Maybe many many different Cauchy oscillation they, they occur. So we cannot say just one thing at the same time. So I skip this. Maybe you try to understand this one. And then another one is that they are using microsecond pulse, and then they induce human MSC. Previously, uh, this uh, they didn't mention which kind of second. Actually, when you added the electricity, there is nanosecond, microsecond, and millisecond. Because when you induce ES for one minute, the cells are burning up. So they always like quick millisecond per minute or per hertz. So that's why uh, our condition, we are using 8 millisecond, 2 hertz, mean, which means that 2 hertz is 1 second 2 times. When you do 2 times, each time have 8 millisecond. So which, which means that one second, we only induce 16 milli, 60 milli, millisecond from one, one, one second, right? Not all, always. So when they use this, uh, they are using microsecond here. Microsecond, what happened? One voltage, no change. Little change, more change, like that. And then even amplitude is increased. So they mentioned that depending on the voltage of the electric current, the behavior of the cell is changed, which means voltage dependent. But here, uh, this is the e electricity time point. Okay. Here you can see certain one, some cell doesn't change, but some cell they react. When they induce, suddenly they increase some cash oscillation. But we can say this is not all. But when you see other cell, what happened? Here, some cell are also little change, little bit minor chain, but some cell short inhibition. Suddenly oscillation is gone. And then re recover again at a certain time. Some cell, they are long wave emission, right? So this is from different uh, voltage. This A is 300 voltage. <coughs> Peak appears here. For B and C, 600 voltage per cell centimeter, but B and C is the same cell condition, same yes condition. But depending on the cell, minor chain, short inhibition, recover, longer inhibition, they are all different. And then, but when you add accelerate more voltage, all are showing the longer inhibition. And here they say that first, the distribution of electricity field, which results in field amplitude, small difference in the area between the two electrodes. So they want to know. Why this oscillation change happen under ES from 600 voltage centimeter? First, electrical field result field amplitude change difference between two electrical load. When you induce the electricity, always you have to add two electrodes. One plus, one is minus. Second, the cells are heterogeneous in size and according to the Schubert equation, Electrical field impact will be different between the smallest and largest cell. So first one is when you induce plus and minus, depend uh, depend how your cell position is close to plus, close to minus, electrical field can change. Not that much homogeneous. The second reason is that why this kind of different behave? Because the cell size is different. Yeah. They mentioned that more size, bigger size, has more effect. And then third one is that yeah, the electric field will be different. Uh, third one is that orientation of the cell 
with respect to the electrical field line, which has impact on the induced transmembrane potential that will lead to the cell membrane permeabilization. So, you know, the, when you plus and minus, the, always the electric field, they along with plus and minus. But your cell, sometime parallelly, sometime perpendicularly, right? Depending on the cell in, axis, the their behavior can change. Fourth, the position of the cell are in the cell cycle could lead to different response to the pulse. As I told you, G0, G1, G2, M page, depending on cell, 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 cell phase, cell cycle, also they will change. So we can think about the four different mechanisms. Maybe all of them are involved for having this different cell behave on the ES. And then you can also think about when you change the, when you culture a certain cell on your media, or different stiffness or 3D hydrogel, not all cells can have same oscillation, right? So you always have to say some tendency. This is my average, this is my representative. But we cannot say this is not all. Oh. Even though you are using some patch clamp to detect some calcium, like uptake or voltage change, people say that this is representative, not all. So you always think about how you representatively measure the real phenomenon. Already the scientists already know that it's not easy to say 100% say something. Just see the tendency, okay? So this A and B is, uh, yeah, another like, they decrease from 900 to 450, nine, 300, 600, 400, a little bit decrease of fluorescence of calcium. This Y is calcium, and then when you do again, similarly. Okay, I skip this part. And then just uh, I briefly mention about this. Okay, how calcium oscillation can be translated to the cell as a transcription factor? Okay, we observe the calcium oscillation happen. And then this is a final or this, this is some another like marker for transfer factor. So people basically think about that this frequency of calcium oscillation can be decoded in certain transfer factor activation. So we can say that calcium is secondary activator, a secondary messenger. Depending on secondary messenger, they induce the different transfer factor as a code. Okay, for understanding that, you know, this is one example. So let's say this is a 50% duty. Duty means, let's say from this to this, this is one cycle, 50% up, 50% down, 50% duty. 75%, 25% down, 75% duty, 25% duty, right? So this is one thing you can remember. And then when you think about the cash modulation, we can think about also duty cycle and then frequency and then amplitude. Many things we can think about that, right? And then one of the very key change factor is MFAT. MFAT is originally coming from the T cell. And let's see. MFAT, nuclear factor of activated T cell has been shown to function as a decoder. Decoder means that calcium modulation, meaning it translates to the calcium, uh, translates to the certain tissue factor, and then exhibit working memory property. In its inactive state, it is possible related and multiple size and kept stable in the cytosol. Like that. In fact, when they are not activated, inactivated form, they are phosphorylation. Okay, phosphorylation for MFAT is non-activated. But upon activation by phosphatase calcinolin, phosphatase, the attack the phosphate, they induce phosphate, right? They remove the phosphate phospho group from the certain, certain protein, which is modulated by calcium binding and calmodulin. Calcinolin, calmodulin, when, when you look at the car something in the protein, which is calcium binding protein, okay? 
and then M5 is dephosphorylated and then translocated to the nucleus to become transcriptally activated. Upon re-phosphorylation in the nucleus, M5 can be transported back to the cytosol, and then there is why kinetic C nuclein export vary among different M5 subtypes. Let's imagine when you culture the cell on stiffness, high stiffness, induced ES, and ORI1, SOC channel, they are activated. And then calcium influx. And then this calcium influx, uh, also in another way, they affect the IP3R through the IP3 from the ER, right? But the other one is that this calcium, they binding to the cal modulin. And then they, they phosphatate, remove the phosphatase for within four minutes. And then dephosphorylation m can insert the cell within 10 minutes, and then they activate something. Okay? And then this phosphatase m in nucleus can be considered as a memory of the previous microenvironment. Anyhow, they can go out to 25 minutes later, but it will take some time, 15 minutes, to inside of the certain nucleus. Here, this is kind of modeling, okay? So when M5, M5, phosphate M5 is normally there, but when the calcium is up, influxed by, by the cell membrane, and then this kind of modeling and CNA and then M5, they are all combined together by the, this, by the help of this calcium. This yellow with calcium bind calmodulin protein, and then with the help of this CNA, canulin protein, PM part, is binding, and then this calcium, calcium, with help of this complex, this M part phosphate is removed, and then they release M part and they go inside. Another calcium it went down inside through a certain calcium channel. Okay? And then through this kind modeling, M FAT and CNA is uh what is that? Calcium calcium complex and then phosphatase remove and the M FAT go inside and also blast where certain T C activation or any kind of thing activity can increase. So those kind of thing we can remember as a key factor. And why M5 is important? Actually, M5, they have many series. M5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But M5, 5 doesn't have calcium binding site, which means M5, 5 is not calcium mediated. For other M5, 1, 2, 3, 4, they are heavily calcium mediated because they have this calcium from inside there. And then it's m and shuttling. They also involve in histone isolation. So m is inside of the nucleus after the dephosphorylation. Uh, some people mentioned that m shuttling to the nucleus also involve in, involve in histone isolation by P300 dependent histone isolation. I skip this. And then here, I want to say that So frequency period, they are reversed, which means that this is millihertz, so one, one, peri one period, this is, uh, this, let's say this is one hertz, one thousand hertz is one second, one time. Period means for one signal, how long do they occur? And the point one is, when they reverse it, this is, frequency. So anyhow, depending on the frequency of calcium oscillation, more frequency means you can see many peak for one minute. Less frequency is less peak. Okay. So this is less frequency, this is high frequency, right? And then uh, this frequency decoded like this manner. High frequency, they are decoded like carpane, in the chem K2 tensor factor, while glucose phosphorylase kinase. M fat, but less frequency, NF kappa B, MK. Okay? So, this is their cell. 
NF-kappa B well known for clinical factor for this T cell and endocellular cell, epithelial cell. So when you measure the T cell, the cash modulation, the frequency is very low. One millihertz means that one thousand second, one time, like that. Okay, very low, very slow. But this one millihertz, uh, one thousand millihertz, which means one time, one second, one time. 10 millihertz, uh, sorry, 10 hertz, I converted hertz. 10 hertz is one time and one second, 10 times. So 10 times, one time, let's say 0.1 time per second. But relatively, the T cell and epithelial cell, endocellular cell are very slow. But some neuron cell and other cell are very frequently, you can see. It. So our MSC were fibroblasts around. Um, yeah, maybe every two or three minutes, one second, something like that. So, depending, so people think about that. As you know, the old cells are coming from the same DNA, but from the differentiation, they have different phenotype of the cell, specific type. And then, uh, under the developed stage, the cell, they decode their uh, calcium modulation as a transfusion factor. So if you feel that, or uh, maybe when you th think about epithelial cell, and then nl kappa b is one of the possible change factor regulated by the cash modulation. But we cannot exclude other transcription factor. This is their finding. Well, we want to say that cash modulation can be decoded in certain transcription factor. OK, I skip this. And then this is our, instead of final exam, yeah, you, I suggest you read this paper, also published in Tejin Kim's group, and then you make the plan in detail for cushion imaging study after summary of your paper. So, uh, so one page, I suggest, one page, um, summary of the paper, one page, your plan. Mm. So anyhow, I feel like you can measure all, you can measure calcium every year experiment. But you think that oh, might be this can be good. Oh, you can just select the proper condition, and then, and then you can you have to choose which kind of plasmid or which kind of uh, calcium dye you are using, and then you check. The, for example, if we wanna. Uh, if we want to use the cytosol flat calcium dye, calcium dye, and then first, why well, you have to do that? You have to study the death flat, flat dye, what kind of excitation and emission they have, and then you can think about our machine, common machine that get detected, most of them detected. And then second, you have to transfect them, and then you have to measure, and then which kind of media condition, calcium free IPBS, or calcium FBS, or another special ingredient for calcium media, without calcium media, this paper, they included, not FBS, but another buffer, calcium buffer, without calcium buffer. Then you want to block the ER, or you want to maintain the block, maintain the ER. Then you want to check the calcium oscillation, frequency, amplitude, what kind of uh, quantification you want to do. Everything, right? From the initial point, the choose of the uh, chemical plasmid, ER plasmid, or cytosol ER plasmid, or flat, or single excitation. So you can just check whatever you want. And then you can detail, describe what, how you want to do the measurement. OK? This is your, uh, instead of, instead of midterm exam, you know, exam, I suggest. So this is not very quickly you can do, just end of our semester, you can submit, submit to me. Okay. So here I want to share their media. So previously that they mentioned that we already have HBSS calcium, without HBSS calcium, but here they more tune the media. They, they homemade it. To prepare the calcium free media, HBSS plus HEPAS plus EGTA. EGTA is extra calcium chelator. 
So they just block 100% calcium. So they added EGTA. And then magnesium chloride, the magnesium sulfate, which is a compensator. Because the focal adhesion should be maintained, right? When there's no calcium or no magnesium, the cell cannot attach. So while attaching the cell on the certain sub -sub substrate, because for focal adhesion protein, they need calcium or magnesium for their stabilization. So at least one ion is needed, okay? So, so to prepare calcium-free media, they added many magnesium. But to prepare calcium media, HEPUS, HBS supplement of HEPUS plus magnesium plus calcium chloride. And then here, calcium media didn't include EGTA because EGTA is calcium chelator. So if you add EGTA again, our calcium chloride calcium is chelated by the EGTA. Okay. And then it is their other like, and you can also imagine another like Yoda one. Here they activate the pH by Yoda one and then methyl B cyclodextrin. This is cell membrane disruptor. You are maybe first to look at this inhibitor. This is cell membrane tension this destruction. And the gadolinium chloride, you already know that. Yeah, other things. And then here I want to say that, uh, as I told you, uh, each cell have different channel, different channel protein they have. For example, certain some certain cell doesn't have pH one and two expression high much. In that case, even though you are adding the Yoda one, they didn't react. For example, here, hex two nine three a normal hex cell. When you treat Yoda one, doesn't have any calcium influx. By this Yoda one is pH one activator. They induce calcium through the pH one pH one receptor. No change. But when they added pH one protein by plasmid, and then suddenly they start to show the Yoda one mediated calcium influx. Okay. In case of Hella, Hella also no. You no reaction through the Yoda, but after adding the pH one plasmid to the cell, they show the Yoda one mediated calcium influx. So maybe you wanna you wanna check certain like certain things in your cell or cell condition, but please do not be frustrated much. Maybe your cell is not doesn't have that much of high amount of protein for reacting this kind of activator or channel activator, something. Okay, thank you.